Today we're going to be machining the second operation of the Titan A10. This is a 304 stainless steel part. We did most of the work on Op A, all of the turning that we could reach, along with the milling work and the inside. But that left us with a problem. How do we hold on to this part? It's got this big round surface on the outside along with this flat. You have to be tricky with the work holding because you can't just pop this in there. We're going to utilize our 3D printer for a solution for two jaws that'll perfectly clamp on to the round surface. And then we'll have a third flat jaw that'll clamp on to the flat. So I'm really excited to see if it'll work. Let's check it out. So for this job, Trevor actually sent me a 3D model of the part with the jaws in SolidWorks so I could see how we hold them. So we have the two 3D printed jaws and we have the third jaw, which is the flat jaw that clamps on to the flat surface of the part. For the flat jaw, it was important to make sure that it was the same length as what's modeled into SolidWorks to make sure that it goes to center line perfectly. So really, I just made sure that the length from the bottom point here to the front of the flat jaw was perfect. The other thing I had to keep in mind is that the milling work on this operation has to clock perfectly with the milling work from the previous operation. So things need to line up. It actually works out good for this design because we can make sure that since we're clamping on to the flat surface here, we just need to make sure that it positions itself straight in C0. So that way, when this machine is clocked in C0, it lines up with the top of this hole here. And I double check that before I start with an indicator to make sure everything's lined up. For the first operation of this part, we're gonna face the front of it, rough out all the excess material, and leave five thousandths on the face and OD. The insert I'm using is a CNMG 432, and it's one of Kenametal's new MP chip breakers for the KCU25B grade. And I also wanted something that wouldn't put too much tool pressure on the front of the part because of the way we're holding it. Because of the odd shape of the part, because it's not a round shape, and because of the way we're holding it, I want to make sure that things stay stable as it gets to the higher speeds. I put a speed limit of 1200 RPM. It's only going to kick on when it starts reaching towards center line. For the facing operation, I have a 60,000 step over on the front of the part. And then for the OD pass, it's only 30 thousandths, but it's only doing it in two passes. The tool after that, I have the half inch Harvey 3 Aero end mill, and this is the same end mill that ran on the first operation. I have a 2D dynamic mill operation that's gonna rough out all of the material on this part, and then it's gonna do a final finish pass around the OD of the part. The 570 thousandths length of the part, we're gonna be taking it all the way down, leaving 10 thousandths per side, and then I have the finish pass box checked here. So after it's all done, it's just gonna follow a contour all the way around the part. So we had those jaws printed on the Mark Forge Metal X. And one thing I really liked about it is that even though it takes a while to 3D print jaws because they're made out of metal and that takes time, you could be programming, just doing other things and using your CNC machine for other jobs. And then your jaws will be good because it's gonna be accurate to the 3D model of the parts. For more information on the Mark Forge printers and if you're interested in one, check out titansofcnc.com and you can find out more information and get a quote on them. After that, I have a 10 millimeter drill and that's going in to do these holes on the face of the part. This 10 millimeter drill is a similar one to what ran on Op 1. It's one of Canamel solid carbide drills. It's a little bit bigger, 10 millimeters. There's nothing too much to say about the drill. I just had to go a little bit lighter because of the way that we're holding the part and I wanted to make sure that it goes all the way through. Afterwards, we have the boring bar, which goes into the drilled hole from OP1 and puts the counter bore on the front of the part. I'm using a CCMT insert in Kenametal's KCU10B grade. For this operation, 
I'm doing a 35,000 step over with it. I also make sure to do a few passes that start a little bit lower than the diameter of the finished hole. And that's because I saw that there was a little bit of material being pushed down from the facing operation from tool one. Afterwards, I used the same boring bar to do a finish pass. We just slowed down the feed rate of it. And then finally, our last tool is a CNMG 431 to just face the front of the part. I'm running it at 400 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. And this is only doing the face because the OD of the part was finished entirely with the end mill that we ran previously. I really wasn't sure if this part was gonna work because of the 3D printed jaws, but I'm glad it did. I'm gonna start tearing down this machine to get ready for our next part. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel. You're not gonna wanna miss what I'm gonna do on the SMX 2100. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.